um, using ZDB. It's very complex, it's very confusing, and it doesn't work if you're doing RAID Z. But you can do it. Um, there are a number of people, particularly uh, uh, federal agencies and stuff, that are actually looking to extend ZDB for forensics purposes, so that if some guy breaks the law and they confiscate his computer and it has, you know, he deleted everything before the cops busted the door down that they can start pulling things out. So this is actually a space you may want to keep your eye on. They're very interested in trying to figure out how to pull more and more information historically out, which is kind of difficult given it's transactional. File storage. Um, so this is um, a look at, at ZDB, just uh, dumping the Uber block basically. Um, gives you an idea of, of some of the structure here how it works, this is a mirror uh, 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 pool that we're dealing with here. Here's a child disk and disk IDs and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, if you really want to get serious about ZFS internals, this is really a great place to start. You know, dump that out, scratch your head and go, what's that? And then go to the code and start, you know, asking questions. It's a great place to kind of perk your interest. Um, so, the keys to observability is to use Dtrace to hone your understanding of ZFS and its internals wherever possible. Don't overfocus your instrumentation. The big thing is, like I said, you want to leverage both VFS uh, layer statistics and the physical statistics. Um, and you really want to juxtapose uh, as many different pictures as possible to get a full idea. We're going to get into some more. Avoid getting obsessed with the Dtrace syscall provider. Like I said, really, you can do better. There's lots more there. Don't limit yourself to you know, probably the least powerful of all the providers just because it's the most commonly used. Um, if you do start to play in Dtrace, BDEV strategy and BioDone are two very fascinating uh, probes you want to look at. So write those down and check it out. And like I said, case stats, case hats, case hats. Um, case stats are the easiest of all the Solaris observability um, capabilities to use, fun to get in there and play with. Um, most of your, the tools you're using today for, for Solaris administration, you know, MP stat, IO stat, VM stat, it's all coming from KSATs. So you can have all kinds of fun little projects like, you know, implementing your own VM stat in Perl or something, you know, in a night. It's kind of fun to get in there and learn. So, ARC, <coughs> the adaptive Replacement cache. ARC was a concept that originally actually came from an IBM research paper. Um, you can find it and download it. It's a fascinating read, but it's written by guys from IBM. So get a very large cup of coffee and a pen and sit down and get ready for a long slog of a night. But it is kind of fascinating. They spent a lot of time over the years looking at different types of, of caching techniques and, and how to improve it. It was such a fantastic idea that Jeff Bonwick and Bill Moore decided to use it for their cache. One of the reasons it's amazing uh, and we get so much efficiency is that there's not one cache list, but there's four. We have a most recently used cache list, MRU, a most frequently used MFU, and then two ghosts. So when it follows right into the cache, it hits the most recently used. Once it gets hit for like the, the second time and then on, it's added into the most frequently used. And these counters just kind of accrue. If something is pushed out of cache for some reason, uh, it's, uh, you know, you're shrinking the arc in order to, to try and regain disk or something, whenever it's evicted, it gets added to an MRU or MR MFU ghost list. So it gets pushed out of these lists into the ghost. So what this provides is a really intelligent cache that it knows what it has and is being used recently, what's being hit again and again and again, and then furthermore, it knows what I kicked out but keeps getting asked for. So it knows what it has and what it doesn't have and how important it is. So it turns out to be very, very uh, intelligent. Um, our case stats can tell you how the data arrived in the cache. So we can know whether it's a prefetched block or it's a direct pool block, meaning you asked for it or it thought you were going to ask for it. Um, it can give you an idea of the mix of direct to prefetch and you can kind of determine whether or not prefetch is actually working for you and helping you out. Um, in my case, generally, if prefetch hits are less than 10%, I turn it off. And remember, it is an intelligent prefetch, right? So it's only, it's only going to continue to prefetch as you keep asking for blocks. 
So that's why I'm not going to turn it off of, unless it's like, you know, 90% or something like that. Um, arc sizing. Arc is huge. By default, arc can grow as large as 7 eighths of physical memory. And this is why if you go and you look and see how much memory is being used by arc, you'll notice it's really high. Um, or if you have your open Solaris system and you just leave it alone and it's just sort of sitting there doing its thing, doing a little web browsing, and then you notice, hey, I have no free memory. It's gobbled up. Um, and this is something that's kind of standard inside of Solaris, right? If the memory is free, Solaris thinks it will use it to your benefit as best it thinks it can, right? Some of us would disagree in certain points, um, but it will gobble it up. One thing, if you do do that little experiment I told you about of just watching the kernel as it runs and you start digging into ZFS, is you notice that every second um, there is a thread inside of ZFS that will look to see if there is an upcoming shortage of memory. And if there is, it will free. So it's constantly trying to provide the system with an opportunity to free blocks out of ARC. So it will give the memory back if you need it. Um, but if you don't, it's just got to use it, um, and generally you want to, right? And that's exactly why we end up seeing those kind of graphs like we did before. You see no physical read I.O. in that seven-eighths of physical memory. Um, the min and max size are tunable. If you're really nervous about it, or you're paranoid, or you just don't trust that it's going to give you your memory back when you want it, you can tune it down. Um, on systems with, you know, I've had systems with like, you know, 32 gigs, of memory and more than 25 gigas, gigabytes was being used by ARC, right? Nobody else wanted the memory, it was there, it used it. Um, in, in cases like this, I've tuned it down as low as, you know, like four gigs or something like that, and I was surprised using ARC summary, I was actually able to see that my efficiency actually was still very, very high. Um, so it's, it, if, you, if you feel you need to turn it down, turn it down. Um, it, you know, it's, it's not like you're gonna see your performance just fall off a cliff. Um, but if you do, keep an eye on that ghost list. Arc summary will actually tell you the size of each of the cache lists. So you can get an idea of whether your ghost lists are growing or not. So if you lower it down and, and you run arc summary a couple of times over you know, a period of a day, two, three, and you see the ghost list rising, right, that means that things are being evicted that shouldn't have been evicted. So I can give you an idea of whether or not um, you either need to stop uh, setting the max size of arc down, or if you possibly need to add L2 arc. <coughs> so this is my arc summary tool. It's written in, uh, in, in Perl. Um, it doesn't require any special modules or anything like that, and it uses case stats. This is entirely based on nothing but case stats. And you can see I give you a little breakdown of some of the, uh, the uh, uh, parameters of memory. Lots of free, free memory and physical RAM in the system. I list any ZFS tunables if they're listed in the Etsy system. Um, and then the size of ARC. Um, and there are a couple of different sizes here. The current size, the target size, that's the adaptive target size. So it actually will forecast that it wants to cache more. So it'll set the target size high and it will try and grow up. Uh, and if it needs to shrink, it'll set the target size low and it'll grow down. So that gives you an idea of how it's trending. The min and max size. Um, you can see the uh, arc size breakdown as to how much is uh, in the MRU cache, how much is in the MFU, and then arc efficiencies, which is what we're really sort of interested in, is seeing what our cache hit ratio looks like. In this case, you notice it's 99%, and the cache miss ratio is, you know, sub one. Um, and there's actually, there are some kind of tweaks in here where the math can get kind of screwy, so I have this real hit ratio, which kind of corrects some of the math. To give you an idea, in this case, it's true at 99%. Um, and then here's some of these things like I'm saying demand or prefetch blocks. How did they get there? What's your efficiency looking like? Help you answer some of these questions. The whole idea of this tool um, is, is twofold. One, to give you the data in a way that's fairly intuitive. All right? Try to break this down with some ideas of how it's used so you can just intuitively know uh, so what some of these values are. But also to give you a starting point for some of your own tools. I'm moving way too fast, huh? <laughs>